Hello, 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 hello. I've been talking for about 20 minutes, not realising that we weren't even going live. That's why it's now ne- near gone quarter past three. Semiagog's been sitting around in the digital green room for God knows how long. There's been many a good joke spread. My, the missus came in. I said she was a flower in my heart, uh, uh, like, a, like a, a rose just on my aorta. Um, it's been very funny, but we got the grift on. Let me just sort the grift on. We'll do that. We'll do that. We'll do that. We'll do that. Bosh, bosh. Let's let's just get this housekeeping out of the way, and then we'll get Semiagog on. Um, he's my new best friend, everyone, by the way, Semiagog. I, uh, I, uh, I am... Did you remember in the... I think it was in the 80s, there was a movie called Single White Female... And it was about this woman who become obsessed. It was there was an advert in a in a local rag called "Single World Single White Female Seeks a Roommate," and this woman turned up and said, "Yeah, I'll I'll move in with you." And then she started getting a bit. I really like you. I'm going to have my hair cut like yours, and I, I don't know. Maybe I'm going to borrow your dress tonight. And when you come back from the the bar you go to with your other friends. I'll be wearing your dress. There's nothing wrong with that. And it was all about this sort of obsession. It was basically misery, but without the foot bit. And it was uh, lesbians. Right? It was lesbianic. It was it was set on the Isle of Lesbos rather than, uh, I don't know, New York or somewhere in America, somewhere from the movie land. I don't bloody know. You're asking the wrong kind of geezer. Right, we'll just get Twitch sorted out. If Rags ain't in there, there'll be trouble. Coming here yesterday, giving it all that. And then we're done. Then we're done. Look at that. I can't believe that poor old Semiagog, my new best friend, my new single white male. <coughs> I mean, I'm going to have to get some air extensions, obviously, and he's going to have to get a lot uglier for us to get that, you know, similarity thing going. But uh, I think we can pull it off. <laughs> Ding! But um, we will be able to talk. Now, the weird thing about this stream is it's obviously quite heavy um, material. Semiotics, grammatology, Derrida, Barthes, Ferdinand de Saussure, usual, usual suspects of the post-structural stroke structural age. And I fully intended to wake up about four hours early and get a load of reading done. Stuff that I hadn't re- I haven't read since I was like 24, since I knew it off pat, since I could just deliver it. You know, because in those days you taught in when you're at university in your in your in your, in your little Deridian gang, it's all you talk about. And you can just trot off entire paragraphs. Oh, well, it's like a Derrida. I mean, what is it in the French? Il y a nos pas de text. There is no outside the text. And yet the text is, we're both at the same time, we're inside and outside the clôture of metaphysics. <clears throat> and uh, as you become 48 and, uh, and smashed your brain to pieces with drugs, uh, you lose that ability uh, quite considerably. <laughs> so what I, essentially what I want to tell you is I've set up a stream to talk to my new best friend and hero about semiotics. I mean, he's even named after the... Uh, he's even partially, we could say, he's, he's semi, he's semi-named after the um after the subject matter i didn't get the reading done i haven't got a clue what i'm talking about so this could be shocking he ain't in rags ain't in be big problems for him i'll be having words with him there's a few uh entropies coming through lovely lovely i think it's it's about time we got the lad in i think Oh, that ain't very fair, is it? That's a bit. Gog! 
I just want you to, am I, am I audible properly? You are, but I think I'm going to have to get me headphones because I think that um, you would have got an earful of yourself then, which I know because I know you enough. Doesn't hurt my enough feelings. Like, well, this is what I was about to say. You're enough like me to appreciate uh, an earful of your own mouth. Uh, uh, but I think... <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, I'm directly um uh, as um as as your new best friend. I uh I actually have been I, I put together a manuscript very very quickly. Um I based it on stories about people turning into chimpanzees and having padded swelling protectors and then I wrote one that was basically about a guy in the future who has a, a like the taxi driver's knowledge, this book of knowledge in some sort of strange dystopian land that's half sunk. And then I found an editor who really liked those stories. He said it was totally familiar to him. This is very him. good what you've and, just done. This is very and, good. And, and I, I basically, I'm about to get a fashy haircut. And um, and yeah, having produced this crazy degenerate fiction, I think that the editor is going to pick me up. And I found one of those weird towels to wrap around my waist. And I've been practicing pouring um, hot beverages on my bollocks. So I think I'm ready. I'm ready to uh, basically step into your shoes. Now... Um, very, very good. Very, very good. I'm very impressed. For people who don't know, um, he was referencing a, a series of texts. Texts, of course. Where texts. We started the stream. So this text. being grammatology, yes. I, exactly. Um, by um, my friend, Will Self. Um, it's the Book of Dave, of course. There's a taxi yes. driver. Isn't and great it? apes. And and great it? apes. Yeah. They, uh, he, he just writes down all his thoughts, says uh, the, there's a, an apocalypse or whatever, and they discover his diary, and it's the Book of Dave. That's the, the new... The, not one of my favourites. Uh, he sent it to me when I was in a rehab centre, and it was like, thanks. <laughs> yeah, I felt the same that. way. My, fr my friend was always pulling um, fiction, and I was always reading nonfiction. So I was going through this horrible breakup, and I was all fucking miserable, you know, sobbing and drooling and just filled with misery at my broken little heart, my broken little parts. Yeah. And, uh, and he said, read this, and handed me these fucking Will Self books. And I'm like, this is like the inside of <laughs> Diane Arbor's head. Who is this fucked up man? So, yeah. <laughs> Uh, he's a, he's a weird one because he's um, politically opposed to me. Of course, he's a he's a guardianist. Uh, he's a, he's he's a liberal. He's a, he's a middle class liberal, but he has been very kind to me. He has helped me out no end. And when you say to someone, "Look, I've been writing this book for five years. Uh, I need a proofreader, a copyreader, a line editor." I was wondering if you could help me out. And he went, no, you need an editor. He said, you need someone who you build a relationship with, who understands the story, who understands what it's about, why you've written it, who you are, and what's the fucking point, and whether it should be burned. And did he uh, have the part about how they attach themselves to you like a remora? Well... <laughs> <laughs> he, he didn't mention that bit, but it happened. It did happen. Yes, they did. It, it, right to your but underbelly, right? <laughs> I met this bloke, and I tell you what, he, um, the universe could not have conspired to have provided a better person for the job. It, it had me in tears the first day I met him. I, um, he's a he's a he's a, a successful writer himself uh, in the traditional form. He's not one of us, or not one of me. Um, I no, don't no, know no, 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 not, not, not one of us. Not one of us. I, We're definitely. I, I, I'm, I'm I'm rolling <laughs> into parallel. I'm picking up the patterns. I am your fucking replicant. Oh, there you fucking, go. I'm going to turn turn the turn the Southeast Asian degeneracy up to eleven. I'm going to come fucking swanning in with with uh, with Birkenstocks on. Yeah, hell yes. <laughs> Just stop it. <laughs> stop it. <laughs> there it is. I lived abroad. I know about that like warm climate Birkenstocks thing. I know all about it. I switched to the Crocs actually. Now in my advanced stage, I, I cannot recommend the Crocs. Yeah, I, I can't. I can't do that. In fact, the other day I got a big <clears throat> pair of suede work boots because. I actually want them to last. I want I want ten years out of something. I've got to that age now where 
I don't buy a lot of things for myself. I really don't. Not for lack of money, but I just don't want things. I'm, I'm done with things, unless I need them. I, if I need a new camera, I'll get it. But my girlfriend always wants to buy herself things and, and have things. But, you know, I don't. And if I do get something, I want it to last. And um, I reckon I'll get 10 years out of those boots. I had a pair of shoes made in Cambodia, bespoke shoes made here. And they were, I think, in they were sixty dollars, so forty English dollars, handmade bespoke shoes. And I'll, and 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 even if the quality of the leather is quite bad, which I think it is, because I put a mirror shine on the on the toe cap, and um, and it and it already started sort of peeling off, and that's a sign of bad leather because to get a mirror shine, it's to do with the 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 grain of the leather you know the, the what you're doing is you're you're slowly filling in the gaps the holes the poor the the, the porosity are we going to go with that yeah 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 we're going to go with porosity and uh and of course it's already struggling to cope with that but even if i get four years out of them which i reckon i will at 10 english pounds a year for uh made to fit my feet and they're comfortable as hell well i, I will say people around the world they have no idea what it's like to have shoes made for you i had to get them yeah. for uh for dance you know you send off tracings of your feet to spain to get proper flamenco oh, shoes gone. and they come back and you're like wow this was made for my foot i am not just a number and you suddenly recognize that there's this entire other world you could inhabit i mean with suits everybody gets it they're like yeah bespoke suit it's tailored for you but when, um, but when you're talking about the shoes, it has such a direct bearing on your happiness, the fact oh, that it you, fits you, your feet. You say everyone gets it. I lost about 50 subscribers talking about um, getting bespoke suits made. Well, that's a little they, grand, you know. They got, yeah, however, they are English. The English... The you know the classic style is English. This is these are the clothes of our ancestors. Right, it's only up Savile Row. What tailor do you go to? Yes. Well, yeah, well, Henry Paul. But the thing is, I I don't do any of that anymore because Savile Row are just brokers. So you go in there, they'll they'll have someone who's a professional measurer. They'll measure you up and they'll charge Henry Paul two hundred quid for the job. And then like they'll that. take they'll take right. that. That they'll take that those measurements down to a China man on Clifford Street right. who works in the basement. Windows it, all fogged up with like fish soup being cooked. Yeah. Yeah, and, and nicotine and opium, and um, <laughs> and um, and then they'll make that suit for them for about eight hundred, and then when you go back there, they're going to charge you four hundred. Now I want to just take back. I don't think Henry Paul do that actually. But there, there are there are a handful of tailors on South unscrupulous, who, who, perfidious who do, do that, Yeah, yeah. But I got I, I got a suit made in Cambodia, three piece suit, uh, fully bespoke. I think it was it worked out about two hundred and forty quid, and it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And I got two shirts thrown in as well. Yeah, I think I have like one or two suits left. I just can't be bothered. I will say this, it's going to depress the hell out of you, but the only thing that lives longer than cockroaches is a pair of Crocs. So when you talk about like how long they last, it's shocking. And I despise all things that come from China. Why um, and, and the internet? Yes, you do seem to be, um, your audio isn't going out, but your, your video seems to yeah, be. Yeah, no, your video is going out, and I don't know why, and it's pissing me off. I'm going to close some things down that I don't even know what they are. Well, it's the middle of the night here, and I have uh, uh, an internet connection. So, uh, you know, it's, and, and it's on a fiber optic, you know, once it gets over to the box. So mine should be good. Don't know. From my end, it looks like you're the one who screwed up. Your picture is... Location as, currently in use. Let, let's let's just fuck around sorting out why this is happening now and then we'll and then we'll be over it yeah it does look like you're about as herky jerky as tyson fury so <laughs> yeah and I don't, I don't want it i don't want it so i don't know what i don't know what that is i don't that can go 
And uh, someone told me to get VPN, Nord VPN. I've had a really cheap Nord VPN. Uh, one more on the Crocs. That's the Crocs right there. You see that? You feel that? Mm -hmm. no, 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 I am no. stepping straight into old manhood. Oh, it, yeah. It, in many ways, though, you have just put what is probably a healthy gap between us. Because that's <laughs> that's all right. I'll, cl right. I'll close it again as soon as I get my haircut. You watch. <laughs> you watch. I'll get some of those dark glass or those uh, those those funky don't have to wear my glasses like you got with the rose color. You know. Mm -hmm. Come Come in. Maybe we could share the meal. Um, um, sorry, I got distracted then because I forgot that my my old man's strapper hanging was down by my knees, and it was a little a slight breeze from the fan. Which would have dragged attention, drawn attention to it. Yeah. You'll get that as well. You were talking about age. You'll get that. Roughly, how old are you? Roughly, I'm a, I'm a year older than you. So fuck you. And oh um, my god! And, so you yeah. don't even need Crocs. You can just tread on nature's shoes. <laughs> no, it's not quite that. You got the like barefoot Hobbit. <clears throat> no, <clears throat> no. Crocs are a part of my life now. They're light. They're light. The other thing is running shoes that they make for like barefoot running. They're super, super, super light, light shoes. But if you want shoes that last forever and you don't want Crocs, what you have to look for is a certain type of boot produced Bundeswehr. It's from Germany. It's from the 1960s and 70s. And a bunch of them got sold around the world as surplus to different militaries and the rest. It's a specific type of German boot. They make two versions. One is an ankle boot and one you pull up. They're, they're the old fashioned like pull on jack boots. Yeah, but yeah, they're yeah. they're the most it's it's insane it's like it's like the last gasp of like old world german quality their boots wow. that are they're unbelievable and and i found a pair recently brand new they were just sitting in a warehouse somewhere i had to order them from uh somewhere in west africa i found them on ebay you got a pair well i have i burned through two pairs and i found two more pairs you have to look and you have to put like a uh, search up yeah, on yeah, ebay you said they last forever how have you burned through two pairs well i mean well i mean i still have them they're all still there but you know I, i'm hard on boots one pair i wore for five years in istanbul and that's like a city that no, destroys that's, footwear that, well i i i tend to buy i've got i've got a pair of foster and some boots they were 800 and they've lasted me 12 years. I've got a pair of Crockett and Jones shell cordovan, which is it's not actually a leather. It's uh, it's uh, it's between it's under the leather. It's like this weird, and it's beautiful. It's so oily. You don't put polish on it. You just you just get a horsehair brush on it once a year. Yeah, look out for shell cordovan. They're gorgeous. But I've got pairs of shoes over there that have lasted for shoes, not boots. I didn't think of bringing any, any bringing any boots out here that have lasted me 14, 15 years. You know, I, I regularly give them a once over with some mink oil. I use right. all Safir products on them. And yeah, and I, I want them to last because they used to. We used to do this as a people. Absolutely. And they fit you. You know, these people in the chat are saying, get them resold. I've had one pair uh, resold twice. You know, the thing is, there are boots that started in the 60s. I, I plowed through water with them many times. It didn't bother to, like, treat them afterwards because I was younger then. And then the leather gets all crapped up. But the ones that I have now are being treated right, you know. And um, I'm, I'm guessing if they were, what, 1960s Germany, I'm guessing they're probably a Blake stitch rather than a good yeah, year stitch. We're, we're not talking about grammatology, man. Hang on. I'm going to go get these boots and show you. People yeah, must yeah, 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 yeah. Go, go on. I want to see them. I'm going to get my shoes. Give <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we will get on. We will get on to grammatology, but you know this is this is what men used to do. Men used to talk about their clothes. Let's and, have a and, look. And no, we, I won't we, oil those hinges because it'll tell me if someone's trying to sneak up on me. Okay. My 
my god. Yeah, I just done that with mine as a water cross. So that is Look at that very, work. Yeah, and that's a very nice bit of leather as well. Show me the top. That's beautiful. Can you show me around the seam? Look, Look at, at the that. stitching inside. Look at the stitching inside and the secondary work with the, the leather strips, right? So it's not just bare. You got your pull-on straps, right? It's beautiful. Show me the stitch between the bottom of the shoe and the sole. Do you know what I mean? That bit that's in there. There's no way to really see it. Yeah, there isn't, is there? But no, but they're oh, super solid because this is a pair that I've had for 18 years or something. Well, yeah. Okay. This Just look up, look after them and they'll outlive you. Yeah, look at them. Look. But they, you see they crack and bust. Yeah. Yeah, but you can yeah. get that sorted. You can get that no, sorted. No, that's, that's done. This one's done, but I found another pair of the same kind, and these ones are in good shape again. So I found, I have like three or four pairs. Oh, this one some biker had, so he wanted to snap to a pair of chaps or something. I just left it in. But if, if you can find these, these are Bundeswehr German military boots. Sometimes they have the, uh, the toe cap with steel. Sometimes they don't. But um, if you don't mind the weight, I've done my, my work here is done. No, lovely. I mean, look after them. They'll outlive you. They really will. Yeah, these, that's kind of depressing. Yeah, but they I will. I bought these when I first came out of Focus 12 Rehab. So let me give you an idea. So these, these are 13 years old. The laces could do it being pulled up. But they're 13 years old pair of Crockett and Jones. And they're just nice. just 13 years old, man. They and they're just they've been resold twice. Right, but now they fit you, right? You put them on and oh, you're truly it, comfortable. It, it, you don't know you've got them on. It's like it's like wearing socks out because they yeah. they, 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 they there's a cork line in them. They put they put they put a hot wet cork line in in which is inside it. And of course over time that takes the uh takes the shape just right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and, and people and then, don't they don't they don't know because people buy a lot of cheap shoes, man. Hell, I used to buy a lot of cheap shoes. The damn glued ass sole will fall off. I was just finally so disgusted with it. The most of, I, you know, I bought some like Allen Edmonds or whatever. It's sort of a middle brand. Yeah, um, I know, you know Edmonds, dress shoe. Yeah. They're like that's as much that's as much as I'm going to spend on a dress shoe. But you get a decent you get a decent shoe. You know, it's yeah, not it's yeah, not handmade right. for you. But there it is. Look, see, we talked about bespoke shoes. Well, um, the thing is, we also lost about 20 yeah. subscribers, and, and, and this is the thing that drives me mad. I mean, I will have people, we have, we, you, Europeans, I'll talk about people of European descent. We have had corporations impose synthetic clothing onto us that is nothing to do with our aesthetic history at all. It's made by slaves in Asia. That's just a fact. And, it, and, and after about a year, it's had it. It makes you sweat to death because it's made of polyester. Oh, yeah. Oh, and, don't even get me started on fucking yeah. polyester. Yeah. And, and, you, and you start talking about getting suits made and, and that suit, you know, get it looked after and it's going to last you 20 years. And people, people get really angry with me. They get, they, I, I mean it, you know, that like I've had enough of this bullshit. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I'm trying to get you to present yourself at your, at your best. And if it's worth doing, you know, you talk about a house that way, you'd be like, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing right. You talk about a relationship that way. You talk about a project that way, writing a book that way. Or, you know, if you're going to, do you want a crap car? You know, but suddenly when it comes to clothes, now I'll grant you, you can get a little bit over the top with it. I'm I'm wearing sweatpants around the house. I don't give a shit, and I've got Crocs on for crying out loud. So it's not there as though I can <laughs> right overlook that. Overlook that. <laughs> However, if I do have to get decked out, I'm going to get decked out. I'm going to roll well, in properly, and I will get decked out. From I used to when I lived in Soho, I'd go for a walk every day, two hours, just to keep the blood pumping. And I'd put a three-piece suit on, handmade shirt, handmade tie. I'm not and, buying it unless you had a bull pizzle swagger stick. I mean, you have to be like slapping your thigh. With I, I had one. Swagger. I had one. I had one because I've got an obsession with goats. I've got three goat tattoos. I won't bother trying to point them out. And I had a girlfriend who found a in Ukraine who made canes. And she said, can you make a cane with a goat's head at, at, at the top? 
and I, I, I still is it's in England, and so I had this um, this three piece suit with my goat head skull um, cane. Yeah, so you like yeah. Robert De Niro and Angel Heart. You're like, my name is Lewis Cipher. Good to meet <laughs> yeah. you. Nah, nah. No, no, no. It was more like um, Soho <laughs> was getting more and more enriched, and it, it was incredibly. Uh, Necessary to have something to smack someone around the head with. <laughs> that, uh, there's a reason those old men carry those canes, you know. Yes. There's an old shop on um, on New Oxford Street called Smith and Sons, and they sell umbrellas. A another one. I spent four hundred pound on an umbrella. I have got twelve years out. <laughs> doesn't, of it. It, doesn't it feel good though? You know, yeah, like... but, uh, twelve years. Twelve years. But in there. Um, on the on the uh, sort of the frontispiece, it's the original old frontispiece from sort of the shop, like ninety years ago, and uh, and it says umbrellas, canes, um, dagger canes. You know that were in the old days when you could buy. When a you cover. could, yeah. yeah I can't you see could, that just, in London now. Yeah. Well, you actually you can. You're just not allowed to sell them, but there's more of them. You right, know, you, right. Along you, with the kitchen knives and the rest. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, do, so, do, do you do you wish to speak about uh, the semiotics aspect at all? Do you have a, a, a there? There seemed to have been something about uh, writing or something you wanted to take issue. I, I got the sense you wanted to fight. You were armed with Derrida, and you wanted to yeah. fight. You took yeah, issue I, with what I had said. You wanted to. Throw I, I didn't take issue with what you said. I do want to talk about it. Yes, uh, for two reasons. One, I like talking about it. I will get caught out because I didn't get the reading done. I needed I, to do. I, didn't I wanted. Either. I looked I at the to... covers. I pulled out my old Derrida and I, I looked at the covers. <laughs> that's so, the one you know. I've got. I've got, and that's the writing and difference I've got as well. Um, I no, I intended to read. Um, I intended to read Spivak's introduction, which is one of the best introductions to any book ever written. I really think so, I, I, and I mean that. I mean that. Um, I intended to give that a read. I, I was going to give Bart uh, Roland Bart's Mythologies a read. And I was also going to give Limited Ink a read by Derrida. And Mythologies uh, and I, is pretty good, man. Barth has some good stuff. A Lover's Discourse is excellent. Oh, by, by it, it, Barth. Barth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I I used to be in a, you're going to, this is going to make you puke, but a little bit of you is going to drink the puke back up. I was in a free jazz band called, called Roland's Barth. Go on, there's that little bit. There's that. No, no. <laughs> oh. Rolling free jazz. Bart. Like you're all like noodling with your little, everybody's doing their little free riffs, noodling. You know, I'm going to hand it off to you, man. Cool cat. Yeah. That kind of thing. Well, no, there, there wasn't even, I'm going to hand it off to you. It was just, it was just so gonna... effortless that you just picked the riff up. I mean, it was almost riff, like you consciously. Riff. Riff, hang on. <laughs> no, you've got the. Your, your. Here's the. Here's the meat. Here, hang on. Here's the. I'm trying to get this right. Right. So here's the the line of of jazz from sort of syncopated, idiot white man's uh, 70s jazz, and here's noise. And riff is here. I mean, this was just. Is everyone is everyone ready? Yeah, go. Which I quite like. Even that improvisation, then I quite liked. I was thinking I should have recorded that and made something out of it. Wow, so that's uh, that's um, that's in the rearview mirror now for you, then, is it? I well, I still play. I still um, I was playing trumpet in that band. The old I was on the old trumpet. Um, nice. You're yeah. you're a you're a polymath and man of many talents. Well, Check you out. two two. <laughs> well, there's definitely Poly pressing in isn't, isn't there pressing that pressing that thing that goes. Oh, oh. I mean, that's one of them. You've lost what? What you, you mean? My? You mean the um, the entropy thing? You just have this little thing that you press, and it goes. Hum, <laughs> hum. 
I can't I can't do it now because because I've got my headphones on it I can't do it but yeah I can do that I, I play tabla in a free jazz band oh, now that's a little that's a little more challenging get those Indian rhythms get into those well, ragas before you play it and that's, that, that's how they that's how they teach uh, taika too when i was taking japanese drums like i still remember the piece tsunami because they're like don 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 doko don 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 do Dun dun doko dun dun toro tsuku tsuku toro tsuku tsuku dun dun toro tsuku tsuku toro tsuku tsuku dun tsuku dun tsuku dun tsuku dun this kind of thing yes do you have to they say do it. that bit at the end though no, that was that was western that was freestyling <laughs> that was freestyling <laughs> that's incredible because um in when you learn it you know i i was doing a, a minor pathway in music on my uh first degree and I, I, I got a bursary to learn tabla and I was over the moon, but he, he was such an horrible old bastard, right? He, he, when, when I took, when I turned up on my tabla on the first day, he went, he went big, massive fat bloke, really dirty old man, really uh, incredible, incredible tabla player, a turd. In but he the, wasn't uh, an Indian. No, <laughs> exactly. No, quite, you know, he was literally like, well, I'll tell you what, this is what he said. He went, first thing we're going to have to do is give that skin a clean. He went, and the, and the, the, universe, the, the art school was Dartington, which was in Totnes. And he went, first thing we're going to have to do is give that skin a clean. He went, it looks like he had some dirty Totnes girl's knickers on it. And I remember at the time with my dreadlocks and my nose ring and my, my hippie pretensions, not wanting my tabla lessons to be associated with dirty Totnes girls knickers it just seemed a bit it was just no 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 you've juxtaposed you've overposed my friend i you know and and then when i when he started cleaning them he had this little tool to clean them obviously it was there was a build up sort of scratching up yeah, and of course, your your head can only go one way there, you know. Yeah. Oh well, well, I wonder what that candle wax, the Totnes girl's knickers, is. So it just basically made it all dirty for you in your mind. Yeah, and, and kept it. going, but but suddenly he said to me, he said, "I'm gonna I'm gonna teach you Teen Tal, which is uh, the first palter, and it's it's easy. It's it's." Um, on the on on the big round drum, I can't remember the name of it. So boring. So I'm sitting again. And I, I don't know if you know Zaki Hussein, the world's best tabla player. I thought it was going to be like that within weeks. And after three weeks, I was still in there going. And 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 he yeah. said to me. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be some work to get the Zakir Hussain level. Yes. Yeah. Well, he. The thing is, though, and, and and this coming back to what you said in India, they um, they don't give those kids drums until they're like nine years old. You want to learn tabla? Yeah, no problem. You can start at six. All right. Yeah. Ready? Sit down. Repeat da, after da, me. Da 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 and the Turks have a similar thing. They call the rhythmic um, systems uh, usuls, which means foundations. And they have the same kind of thing, although they don't they don't focus on as many fingers. Um, you know, they'll play on the rim. Like there's Egyptian style and there's Turkish style, and they'll play up here. Sometimes you're snapping on the rim in order to right. produce the hit, or you're doing multiple finger hits. So in, in many respects, it's not, as, it's not as complex a tradition in terms of having the multiple drums. Um, and they don't have the, I think that uh, the, Tablas have the the weight in the center, right? That gives it doom, 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 doom. Yeah, doom, right? well, you slide it. Right, but they actually yeah. have some sort of shit that's on the drum head, right in the center, that makes yeah, it yeah, flex yeah. differently. Um, yeah. So the the Turks don't have that, but they have the usuls, and they run from a measure of one. You know, like you use in a religious uh, zikr, zikr, 
or whatever for one, 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 one unity of God hearing the single driving beat, almost like some Indian ceremony. Dong, dong, dong. But um, they go all the way up into the 70s or whatever, you know, and they build them out of units of even and odd much like you see what, with um, what are they, well, sorry what are these drums called i'll have a look into this well the, the drums are just darbukas or whatever but in ottoman music turkish music it's similar to like ragas or whatever with okay, Indian yeah, music the ragas, and, yeah. and okay. uh, mak makams uh with persian but um but they the point is that they have a a system called uh, it's called usuls in fact that's where the name from dune usul for paul muadib or whatever it comes it's, it means foundation or basis and as part of the training for the musician you have to memorize the usuls and it goes from measures of one all the way up to measures of like 72 or 76 or whatever it is and they build okay. in units so you know like if you have fives it can be like one two one two three one two one two three yeah. but it can also be one two three one two one two one two three one two, yeah, three, yeah, one, two, one, two, one, two one two and you, you, once you get the even and odds in there that's some that's some hardcore stuff man that's how, yeah. how good are you at, with all those time signatures because i am a mess um i'm not i'm only good now with uh i can do um nines a little bit and um fives and sevens a little i get kind of start stepping on my dick with 11s because i haven't worked with them <laughs> um and uh but i'm good with the flamenco ones which are 12s the flamenco okay. is interesting because it's 12 it's rich in factors so there are all these different ways you can emphasize 12 and in particular they'll set their measures up where in some cases it's kind of like uh seven and five but it's a set of 12. You know, so, so you're also playing with four fours there which is kind of handy maybe that is what's helping uh, three, with, right. three fours. What, oh, what do you mean? Yeah, of yeah. No, 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 of course, yeah. Or four oh, threes yeah. or six twos or two sixes. Yeah. Um, so it, it gets kind of funky. I, I am all, awful at it. I was really not the tabla player I thought I would be. But so after about four years of learning to say it, they finally give them the drums and right. then it's learning technique. That black spot you're talking about in the middle. What that's made for, that isn't for the more that more that you it's, get that by hitting the skin and and, and then just right, missing sliding that flat spot. But you 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 use this bit of your hand, more. but that black spot, you put this finger half on the black spot and half off it on both drums at any time, and you do that. It's a bit like that 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 thing. So you've got it on that black spot and then you come down with that finger and you'll get the harmony, you'll get the octave. So you'll 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 be going down. Oh, it's dun, literally dun, like dun, pressing dun, this dun, it's like dun, pressing dun, a string dun, in the dun. middle to to, yeah, to yeah, half exactly. it or jump on octave. Like on exactly the monochord, like right? Exactly like that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, they're Damn. quite they're, they're quite the drum. They really, they really are. Yeah. It's one of those things. Hello, Alan. Alan's had enough. Take care, mate. I'm just going to do my grift. I was about to um, say, don't you need to? Don't you need to solicit some grift just to make yeah. the haters hate you more? Certainly, I yeah, thought you were no, doing very well mopping the floor and getting paid for it with your no, yesterday's no, stream. I thought that was excellent. Excellent. <laughs> it, 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 you saw it yesterday. It was brilliant because I because I outright say that the funny thing is that if I tell you to give me money because they ate it. You actually do give me the money, and they do actually ate it, and it, right. and it, and, and it, right. it's incredible. But so let me just get this griff done quickly, people, because I am up at the crack of dawn, not that dawn. Um, um, so we've had a couple in, but we'll do them all later, so we're not interrupting things too much. Um, let me just get that. Okay, you know how it works from now. You can support the channel using the super chat, which is the dollar sign at the bottom of the see semi -agog has ruined it it would semi -agog do that can you but that yeah 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 right yeah, yeah. There. see right, right there, see, right there. Look, we have a guest grifter and if that doesn't bring in the filthy lucre i don't know what will give um, him money give give him money i'm here to help <laughs> you give him money <laughs> that was brilliant right there um, or alternatively and preferably, because then you don't give Susan any money and you, I hate Dutch, you can entropy. use entropy. It really is better. It, it, it is better. Um, and the entropy link is in the chat now. 
but it's also in the description of the video so you can use that there are a few that have already come in and i will go back and deal with them later so don't worry and we are we are now getting away from we've done we've done um schmutter and percussion what else are we going to use to avoid talking about semiotics <laughs> um i tried to well we talked about fiction um we talked about uh yeah bespoke shoes we talked about uh drumming um yeah oh, look, at uh, look at that that's the kind of stuff i get bloody derrida again call i mean who'd want to talk about one of the most Im important ah. Oh. Hey, so, so, so he's, a, he's a Kabbalist. He's a sloppy Kabbalist is what he is. He's screwed up. He, he's got like half-truths. He's impressed himself with his little half-truths. No, that's I think you're doing. right. I think you're right. I think you're right. I think that's all he can do. I think because of the... Yeah, you, you, you had some half-truths there because you were moving your back, but your hands weren't moving, which was peculiar. That was just uh, to fake That was to fake you out. I, I call that a sloppy half-truth fight. If you'd done that to me, even with Absolutely. my skills, you're, you're, you're looking at the stars very quickly. <laughs> that was incredible. I'm going to look at that back later. What the hell was going on? You have to think them out, man. What are you talking well, about? Well, I'm also thinking that you've got a pair of German uh, steel toe cap boots on. So while I'm being, um, while I'm being, um, what's the word? Did, 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 did Fake, to my distracted, eyes. yes, up top. I will kick you yeah. in that little place where your bones come down on your foot. Because I learned if you kick sharply enough with enough weight right there, you'll actually yeah. knock those two bones. What is that? The tibia and the fibula or whatever? I can't remember. You knock them right off the back of the heel. And it's weird when you when your bones are all fucked up right there, or you stomp a, an instep. It's a pain in the ass to do anything with the top half of yourself. <laughs> but I, you yeah. know, I don't, I don't get involved. I'm not. I'm. I am a lover, not a fighter. I've been punched oh. in the nose and in the face. I'm done with that. I no more. No more. My my nose used to be straight, man. You see that shit right there? This oh, crap. Right. That wasn't well, look, there well, before. Well, well, we're going to get on to that. Baggins, thank you for the um, ends, the, the five NZ. Much appreciated. Now, listen. Now, look. If I look at you from that angle, look at that lovely straight nose. Look at that. Right. When I walk into prison, the Aryan Brotherhood are licking my boots clean with that one. Right. When I go like that, and there's that Manny Cohen yeah, right. curve on it. Now listen to this. I got through same, same thing. Twenty yeah, twenty years of petty drug dealing and really stupid behaviour without getting a punch in the face. And then my Staffordshire Bull Terrier had, had a poo, and I leant over to put it in its bag, and it came running over. And just as I stood upright to you know bag the plop, it jumped up and butted me out cold i woke up about an hour later with blood coming out of just claret everywhere a bag of shit in me hand and and my own dog licking done its own by your own done by your own dog yeah yeah, yeah that's some yeah. faithless judas shit i'd be taking him straight to the fucking korean restaurant at that point <laughs> well that's where i got him so you know i don't know i don't know what the return uh okay. I don't know, the, we the, don't the want back we don't want him back Right. Yeah. That's why we gave him you. When you go back in those seven blokes like that. <laughs> That's why we gave him you. The fuck up, dog. Yeah, mine was a fight outside of some house party in high school. You know, that was still the stage where I just closed my eyes and fight, you know. So <laughs> so, yeah. so were you a fighter as a young man, like a proper fighter? No, or hell just... no, no. No. I worked as a bouncer there for a little while. Well, that's why I asked. But I mean, I was too small to be a bouncer, but I was smart. So they put me on the door and I'd like catch the fake IDs or I'd catch the drug dealers and stuff. Like I wasn't the big bruiser. And when I did try, obviously, and when I did try to, you know, that kind of thing is just a mess when you got a, like a crowd of people. And the best thing about the big bruiser types is that they, they act as a, a, as a, what do you call it? Um, Deterrent. Deterrent, right. You just, you're like, no, I mean, your head and your neck are like one fucking column going down into your yeah. thick ass upper body and no one wants to bother with that. You know, whereas I'm like, get out. And they're like, mm, no, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but, um, but I was useful in terms of, um, 
spotting problems. And, you know, I knew about when people got thrown out, you know, they'd try to change their clothes, but they'd have the same shoes on and shit like that. You know? um, <laughs> those, so, those clever club um, fighters. I um, My job at most, I didn't work as a bouncer, but my job was to sell on the drugs that the bouncers had stolen from the books they chucked out in the same club. Now, right. what what was quite amazing was there was always quite a short bloke there as well as these big lads. And it wasn't me. That my, I was a drug dealer, so that's what I'd done. But this other bloke's job was just, what's the word? To just, just... Uh, what's the word to just calm them down de-escalate yeah. De yeah de-escalate the situation because they didn't want that they didn't want that right the, and the bouncers don't want that shit either yeah. because the, yeah. the people you work for are not going to fucking bail you out yeah they're not going to pay for shit to like save you and the yeah. cops aren't going to have a sense of humor after you break some dude's face and the yeah. lawsuits and the rest all yeah that, they don't all that so this little when it when it's all kicking off this little five foot four bloke comes out and he just says oh oi, oi, gents just come and sit down here i've got a couple of drinks coming out we'll have a nice drink i just want to have a word of you you can kick the shit out of him afterwards i just want to have a word of you amazing and and you know and, and this what this wasn't an act they suddenly weren't blokes coming up behind them with things around their necks they come out with some beers and he was going look you've had a bit of a bad night you you're fucked here. You're not going to get in here. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to ring my mate, and he's going to he's going to get you in his his place. He's going to let you go out there and have a few drinks, and uh, because the, the, you know you don't want that reputation. You don't want a reputation of bouncers. No, a, 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 a bucket of blood bar. Nobody wants yeah. to. Nobody wants it. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And it's a different but, scene too, because like I mean, y'all in your pubs and clubs and yeah, you know. I remember being in Stafford, Staffordshire one night, and I don't remember when it was that I, I was in. Yeah, Stafford is what it's called, right? Isn't Stafford the town in Staffordshire from which? Yeah, I'm trying to remember. And these people, Staffordshire, Staffordshire, Staffordshire. Yes, and I watched all these strange zombie-like figures come stumbling out of these bars and pubs and things at this particular hour. And as they did stumble out into the streets, it really was. I, I understood the old. Uh, I understood the old Shaun of the Dead thing. You know, yeah, it really yeah, did yeah, look yeah. as if everyone had just like slammed down like three pints in order to, you know, to be ready before they hit the streets. Like everyone came pouring out and stumbling shit face drunk. And then there's that whole like Celt, Celto Germanic fighting thing, you yeah. know, everybody loves. It. And the other thing where everybody has to stop in the middle of their drink to emphasize things and start gesturing with it. And you're like, are you going to fucking drink that? And they talk for like 20 minutes and then you think they're about to drink it. They're about, and then they go <laughs> Uh, 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 Y'all are all fucked up. Your whole country is fucked up, full of insane people. No, no, without a doubt. And that's what's going to save us. That's absolutely <laughs> what's going to save us. Once the money runs out and they realise, uh, they realise what they're left with, they're going home. Believe me. It's a dark place. It's a dark, dark place. Well, the thing about that Shaun of the Dead thing, look at it like this. You get home from work, you, you finish work at half past five. You, your commute might be half hour, might be an hour. So you're getting home uh, six, half six. Your missus is going to make you something to eat. You're going to jump in the bath. It's now eight o'clock. And so you're going down, you, get, you, get your, you make your way down at the boozer. So you get to the boozer at eight o'clock. That first pint, slow one, you know, two minutes, because you, you want to take it easy for that first one. But before you know it, it's last orders. They're ringing the bell at like quarter to 11 or something. Yeah, I heard there was some, wasn't over the like, I, you know, this was probably 10. This was, oh God, I'm going to cry, man. This was 14 years ago that I was last there. But, um, but they had already begun doing some things. I think some people told me that like, you know, half the problem is that they, they know it's going to close early. So they're binge drinking with the oh, yeah. tiny amount of time they have. So by the yeah. time they do hit the streets, yeah. They're shit faced. Yeah, you, you're. If you think about it, you're you've got three and a half hours drinking, and you're not going to take it easy because this is. It, you know, maybe Monday, Tuesday, you might, but Thursday, Friday, Saturday, that's your night out. You've worked all week for that, and you've got nothing else in your life, so you are just going for it. And then every pub in that whole town, get out. 
They give you a little warning. Bing, bing, glass quarters. The bar, everyone goes to the bar. 20, 20 Stellas, please, mate. Yeah, no, cheers. That's just for him, like pouring the old lot down. And then fuck off, fuck off home. Now, A, I wouldn't want to be anyone out on those streets during that time, but I certainly want to, wouldn't want to be that woman at home either. Fuck me. And that's half yeah. half joking, half without a no, doubt. No, I saw it. There's a, there's a serious, you know, edge. Yeah. It's, yeah. I mean, there, there's fighting in American bars and things, of course. But there's there's a different, like, just beneath the surface. I mean, maybe it's changed. I haven't seen it in years. And I'm not pretending to be, like, deeply versed in this culture. I've only been to the U.K. a couple times. But um, but there there's definitely, like, a, a, like the, the best medicine for my sense of desperation is the red, red cravi, right? Like, they're like, we'll, we'll get out there, you know, for a little bit of clockwork orange ultraviolence. You know, there there is a an attitude of like, I, I think I can get this out of my system by punching you in the face repeatedly. You know, they did. No, that, that makes sense. That make, absolutely makes sense. In in the old days, when I was really young, in, in England, the pubs closed at three o'clock. They opened at midday and closed at three, opened again at seven and closed at ten. That's when the members bar thing come from. Oh, so you they know, they always closed early, is what you're telling me. Well, in, in the old days, like they at three. I think it was either I think it was either three or four. They closed. You couldn't you couldn't drink all day on on a Saturday or your day off. You weren't allowed to. Then you no bars were licensed to. So there was a there was a workaround called the members bar. So if you were a member, then you could drink. So the members bars all opened at half three. And so everyone would get chucked out their bars, go down the members' bars, and they'd drink until about half seven, half eight, and then go back to their usual pub. And then when the usual pub chucked out about half eleven, the members' bars opened up again. I mean, they're all still there, you know, like the Groucho Club, Jerry's, Soho House. Well, Soho House is quite new, really. It's, like it's, it's always good to have a safety net, right? Well, exactly. You've got your, you've got your second, you're like... Yeah, they'll, they'll catch me if I fall, right? But so I'll, you've I'll, got a place to be. I'll tell you what, though. Of all the drugs I've done and out of all the drugs I've... Regret's the wrong word. I think it's, it's, it's pathetic to have regrets, really. I haven't got time for it. But alcohol's the one I could have done without. The, oh, the it's moment. some hardcore fucking poison, man. It's really it'll, horrible it'll stuff. Kick, kick the shit out of you, yeah. Yeah. And my friends that I see that, you know, I mean, I smoke cigarettes and shit. I'm not trying to get judgmental. You know, I got my own little monkeys on my back, so to speak. Um, and, you know, nicotine's pretty hardcore. Um, hang, on, hang, on, hang, on, hang on a minute. You, you, were you, were you tapping your tourniquet, do you inject your cigarettes? Uh, no, I'm, I'm saying that after a fashion, yeah, someone who actually does heroin, that joke just doesn't really work, right? You're all like, get out of here, asshole. Um <laughs> Uh, I'm just saying that, you know, I've done my share of drugs and the rest, so I'm not trying to, you know, cop an attitude about people drinking, but it, it just, maybe it's just because I'm a pussy, you know, but my, my physically, my body cannot put up with the ravages of alcohol, like getting up the next morning and feeling words. like you've been beaten and kicked and clubbed yeah. and just fucked, you know? Um, so yeah. And people who do it regularly, you better be one of the, you know, like trying to call people gammons and shit, you know, one of these heavy guys, pink skinned, like full bodied, heavy big you know big cubic mass i'm too like skinny and small to carry that much alcohol yeah i got these friends who um who weigh a lot more and they just laugh at me they also laugh at me in a uh, cold weather you know because i'm like fucking cold and they're like in there in a fucking iron maiden t-shirt laughing their asses off as i'm like that's an that's an english thing too right what about german army boots right <laughs> Hello, Rags. Nice to see you. You don't need to apologize for being late. Oh, you haven't apologized. You just said I'm late. I apologize for uh, assuming you'd apologize, but nice to see you. We've all been a bit worried about you. So Rags is our moderator on Twitch. We stream on Twitch as well, but it's it's a bit of a joke because it's um, our moderator and someone who chooses to keep him company over there. So it's, it's, it's but, but we do it. Um Going back to the, the drinking, there's something about what you just said. Uh, oh, I was at a rehab centre. I've done, done loads. I've done about 20. I've lost count. It's, it's over 20. 
And one of the darkest things, there was a mental hospital in my hometown and I was still quite young at this stage. And when, when I was like five or six, <laughs> hang on, it, it, this story isn't that bad. This isn't like, so my mum caught me shooting up at six. And she <laughs> right. up. <laughs> this is a bad sign. <laughs> yeah. She, uh, she, she, they, you used to be able to see the water tower of the uh, of the mental house um, from the bottom of our street. Um, nice one, Baggins. I think I already thanked you for that. I'm just doing these because entropy is screwing around, and so I can't always be sure they're on there. Just le just learn how to super chat. Yeah, but you need to practice. The the trick is to practice with increasing amounts of money. Uh, um, semi a will tell you that. He'll, he'll, he'll tell you that. Or you can try try entropy. See if you can move on up one. Don Browning, who has always tried to set us two up, I think she's got like a, a thing for, well, me essentially. In the 1980s UK, the Indian and Pakistani restaurants were licensed to serve after the pubs closed. You add to all the food though. Yeah, yeah. And that's where that... Um, that's where that whole culture of smashing up the Pakistani restaurant come from because you could you could go there and just keep drinking until you realized you were a racist and tear the place to pieces. Um, anyway, when I was about 16, my mother, thank you, Dawn, for that super chat as well. Much appreciated. We are on, um, um, we are after taxes, we're now on minimum wage, which is, which is humiliating. Um, my mother used to say to me, you mess about, you you behave like a naughty boy, you'll be in that place one day, because we knew it was the mental home. In the town I grew up in, there were five mental homes as I was growing up. So the, the odds were quite good that I would end up in one. And you could see the water tower from this, this, this main one from our street. Anyway, I, um, why am I telling you this? Oh because shit! Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So I did end up there. I did end up there. They had a, a they had a, a detox center, which is different from a rehab. A detox is where you go to just sh sleep in your own shit and vomit, and then when when you can sort of pull your clothes on and sort of walk in a straight line for more than three meters, they chuck you out on the street and go, "Don't go using now." You're like, pip, pip. <laughs> yeah, you're done. Um, which is time you know and um while we're in there one night the boss who i'm still good friends with and he's, he does watch my videos if you're watching joe you'll remember this and, and you'll and you'll know why you still do this one night about half 10 he's got he's got us all he's got us all out of our common rooms and all like playing fucking connect four and all the other stuff that sends you mad and he went my girlfriend has put this plate of fried fried prawns and rice in front of me that's what they call tp living you know you have a good squaw when she'll chew your moccasins to keep them soft for you too yeah but nice. i don't know that she realizes that's going to be very cold under that fan by the time this stream is finished <sighs> you should go put it in the oven love <laughs> yeah just let it sit there in low temperature Take it back to the shop and say it was cold when you bought it two hours ago. So anyway, half ten, he gets us all, put your coats on, and we're all indoors with them on anyway because we're rattling error in and all that. But it's a, it's a mixed rehab. There's alcoholics in there, you know, you name them. And um, so we all we all get dressed and all that, and and I, I everyone's quite chuffed because it means we get to have a smoke as well because you're not allowed to smoke in the building, but so we can just chain smoke for the duration of whatever we're, whatever it is we're going uh, and going to do. So we go outside, you know, a bit misty. It's this old Victorian mental home, fucking horrible place. You know, especially when you're withdrawing from heroin and you're, you're really sensitive to sort of historical aesthetics and and you, you know Do, does that sort of place have the uh like in the u.s 
it's obviously not Victorian, most of it, but um, but I associate that with a particular kind of institutional pale green tile. Is it that kind of thing? Inside is for sure, yeah, but only like a third of the way up. Then it's a, then it's like this sort of brown. It's a really, really, it's almost like design. We're back, we're back. Yeah, I think we are. Back. Okay. Um, so anyway, we've walked for about five, ten minutes through all these really weird places and, you know, just blokes walking around going, give us a cigarette, go a cigarette, and then just walking off. Like mental patients are allowed to walk around the place. And then we get to this sort of building quite a way away from where the, the rehab, the, the detox bit is. And then Joe, the boss, just says, right, he says, just shut up, just shut up five minutes and you can start hearing. And, it, and it's hell, it's hell, it's hell. I, I, I'm probably making it more humorous than intended. Just echoing down the hallways, the misery of it. Well, the, uh, you know, this this is this, this isn't we're, we're outside still, so this is coming out of like windows and, and air vents and things. And he's gone to us. He said, he said, this is the wet brain ward. He said, and wet brain, wet brain. He said, it's not it's not a um, a medical term, but it's what we call it. There is a, there is a medical term for it. But he said, wet brain is where you've drunk so much. You've, you've drunk so much in your life that all your receptors for all the things that moderate your mood, so your dopamine receptors, I'll keep getting a little, the little white circle. Anyway. He said, uh, you've done so much damage to those receptors that there's nothing they can do for you. They can't give you any painkillers. They can't give you paracetamol. They can't give you opiates, morphine. They'll treat alcoholics with morphine at that stage, just before that stage, because their, their receptors can just about, you know, pull, hold on to a few to stop you just feeling like death but it, it can get to a point where you get to this wet brain where you're just in emotional more than physical emotional agony and he made us sit there for like 10 15 minutes listening to these these people like going ah, ah, right just to let it just to let it sink in yeah uh, but then then once we're all sitting there going fuck me and all the piss heads among us like tracy the the bar woman from the coaching horses i'm never having another drink again that, that's done me that's worked for me that has i'm never having another drink again all right and, and everyone's sitting there going yeah until tuesday which is the day after you leave and that'll be your your one to celebrate completing your detox um then they take us in there and these people are in their 30s oh, man. Yeah. and that's the kicker because we're all thinking these are 70s you know maybe 60s 80s no these are these are young men and young women in their like late 20s mid 30s so i see you have expertly brought it back around to how poisonous and dangerous alcohol can be there you go. That was my it, that was my plan. I it is know. it is indeed. Yeah, it's hardcore. You know, everybody has their own drugs, and I think we've talked about it before. It's uh, you know, each person has their individual brain chemistry, you know, or, or whatever the hell it is. Their whatever their endocrine issues are. However, it all comes together. But um, some people can drink and 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 put it down. Some people can't. Likewise with the uh, all the various other um, you know, delightful but, you know diversions. But, but the weird thing is, it's like heroin. Heroin is very hard to overdose on. It's very hard to overdose on. Unless you're drinking. Now, the thing is, if you're drinking, 
and then you're using and you die, that goes down as a heroin overdose because that that helps the, that helps the system. Whereas it's actually the the alcohol that's killed you. Right, and it's a hardcore poison, man. I mean, that's why that's why your liver trying to filter the shit out, get, you know, ends up yeah. having its problems, and and that's why you know coming off of it, man. Remember, I drank half a bottle of Rucku, not mixed with any kind of water, and I was like 14 years old, and I for the first time had proper <clears throat> alcohol poisoning, wow. where, where you're like literally shaking. Hang on, 14? Did you say? Yeah. No, I wasn't. I wasn't a big drinker. It was just childish stupidity. A friend of mine came back from Turkey with a bottle of Rucka. You know, like a seven hundred fifty. Yeah, 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 yeah. But normally you have Rucka with. It's like ouzo. You know, you have it with yeah. with food, and you also dilute it with water. Of course, we were just kids, so we didn't do it. So imagine like drinking half a bottle of sambuca or something as a kid with no food, and you know, I woke up the next morning. Oh my god! You know, happily when you're when you're young, you have some. You're a. Uh, your bones are still flexible, you know. You're resilient, <laughs> darling. Um, but yeah, it, um, yeah, that 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 taught me. I mean, alcohol still has its moments, but also, you know, if I'm like, this is a great time. I've, I love this alcohol. This is awesome. And now I'm gonna go get back with my old lady and do some fucking. And you're like, uh, well, I guess I won't. I'm like, that's yeah. that's that's an that's an easy thing to be like, mm, um, check please. You know, no, no, I don't, I don't yeah. need anything that keeps me from being able to fuck. You know. Sorry, yeah, yeah, sorry it, to say it, it so bluntly, but no, it really does. It's the last thing you want, especially in your teenage years. You right. know, you, you you're walking home with the hottest bird you've ever seen, and you suddenly realise that thing ain't moving. If anything, it's going to go up in, inside your own. Body. It's, a, it's a shocker. <laughs> Browning's given me a f five Australian dollars, one for every dislike. Suck it up, buttercups. Nice one, Dawn. Nice one, Dawn. Let's keep them. Um, Let's keep them keep, keep them smiling. Thank you, Dawn. Um, um, no, name name who's just called name who's got like a smiley. He dropped two quid and said Griff test. So we got that. Chrissy dropped three quid in a entropy and said good morning, Chris and Scrubs. I will um, refresh that because sometimes it don't work. Um, there you go. We didn't, we still haven't got onto um, semiotics at all, have we? I'm sorry. Well, I mean, you can maybe pull like, you know, 10 minutes just so people don't feel cheated. Um, just tell me something smart about Derek. You could, you know. Um, well, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Stephen Campbell dropped a tenner and he said, Chris, remember that time we told you to chat with Oliver over the last year or two? Also, for Oliver, are you going to chat with Donovan Warland again? Uh, uh, yes, I hope to. Go, go tell Donovan. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I need to answer something that he talked about on his no, channel. No, I'm glad no, you no, reminded no, me about that. No, but, no, this, no, but this no, is no, Dangerfield's no. channel, and what we're supposed to be talking about is the fact that you're supposed to be paying him constantly because he's <laughs> not here He's not here for any other reason than to grift, as his detractors and uh, opponents will tell you. So, I mean, if you don't come through for him, I mean, really, where's he left? It's like, what if Darth Vader didn't have a black outfit? You know, I mean, if he... If he he can't grift in I mean, in front of my new best friend as well skin scar dropped to five spot and said good stream chrissy r dropped free and said the farton um grego dropped free and said are semi-gogs crocs a bromance deal breaker well i suppose that question is to me well i mean uh yeah i'll I'll be quiet. I'll await your judgment, man. I felt that I kind of that you kind of like thought thought less of me as a result of all of that. I'm not going to hold back here. I was disgusted. <laughs> no, I know there's things to wear around the el the house. Look, I am wearing uh, I am wearing a, a Cambodian crammer. Fall off this seat with wheels. It'll either be visible bollocks or hospital, but. I'm wearing this in the house, right? I get it. I get it. I get it. Yeah. There's things to wear in the house. Hmm. But Crocs rhymes with... Spock. Flops. Socks. No, no. Clocks. Clocks. 
Crocs rhymes with flocks, as in flock of seagulls haircut in the 80s, of which your shoes are the 2020s version of. It so actually, was, I'm wearing my flocks. Of, I'm wearing my flock of seagulls. There you go. There you go. There's there your, you go. Your, your your Kentish take on the, the Cockney rhyming slang. Mm -hmm. the, it, it, <laughs> Chris has got to run. We got to run. Hang on. We got to run liking semiagog. I don't know what these people are talking about half the time, but um, you've got to go, have you? But you're liking semiagog. All right. All right. Um, my my um, my moderator said gay tablecloth. Come and say that. Come out here and say that to one of the local Cambodians and watch him strangle you with it and throw you over his shoulder. Oh, and they'll they'll drop. They'll silently sit in a tree and wait for you to walk by and like drop out of it and gut you, and then yeah. like, put, yeah. and then walk off barefoot into the jungle. Like yeah, don't don't be. Mm -mm. Yeah, you'll be feeding their family for the next six months. <laughs> <laughs> but I know you're only joking, Mr. Labrador. It would be lovely to see you out there. I know that is. That's Linda Hunter. Am I? Oh, my God. Help us out. Can you uh, send me a go? Mi accent es muy difícil por tu, no? My accent, accent is, is very... too difficult for you, no? Correct. Yes. Is that for me or is that for you? For me and you. It's for me and you. I was thinking it's very cold, love. Don't, I don't know. lick the top of that all suggestively. Oh, I need a drink. <laughs> Why? Well, Why would you? No, 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 no. That doesn't mean do it again. <laughs> Why? Yeah, go for it or not. Do you want me to? Yeah, yeah. Give it here. I'll, I'll, I'll do something similar. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Um, right, um, no, no, Linda. I managed to fully understand your um, your um, your angle. Right now, I I think we might have a running gag here where we um, we set up streams of semiotics and grammatology and absolutely and call it whatever you want, you know. Never talk absolutely, about absolutely never it. once. Yeah, uh, but the basic. I mean, all I was going to basically say is there it is. Whatever, man. There, yeah, whatever. Well, whatever. Right, here's what I was going to say. All right, here what here's what I was going to say. When you were talking about it, I had a mate on my phone because everyone has wanted me to talk to you. Everyone has. Everyone has. Well, all, nice. all, the, all the all the best people. All all the people in Crocs have wanted me to talk to you, and um. And he kept talking to me, going, you should talk to him. La, 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 la. And I said, I said, the thing is missing. The thing is missing, which is the real key point, is that the, the whole thing about writing and speaking is that when you understand that writing and speaking follow the same rules of language, Fuck you. I was looking over there and I caught it. I caught it. I, I caught it. No, we'll follow I, no, the same I'm, rules of I'm language. Looking, I'm looking forward to seeing a bit of colour in your cheeks for the first time ever. You're not going to see on. it other than my monitor tan. Go on. Go on. I was listening. You were no, about to no, tell no, me no. that actually no. that language, that spoken language and writing, uh, according to Derrida's view, that they're inextricably tied together that in fact you know that and and in fact the the aspect of um of writing that's supposedly associated with presence and immediacy is in fact deferred um in the same way that the text is but the um the reality is that he's talking I wasn't about gonna something say else that. because if i was going to say that it would uh why would derrida be so interested in la difference which requires right which requires writing to distinguish it from la difference, which is a different meaning when spoken. There but, it both, is but both are deferred. He's talking about basically infinite, what a, a purse, you know, uh, discusses in its own way, Charles Sanders' purse, who's an, an, another guy besides Saussure, yeah. Saussure as yeah. a, a basis for, for yeah. semiotics. Yeah. Basically, um, He's talking about a kind of infinite semiosis. The fact that you know the, de the the deferral is that the sense or the meaning of any given term, whether written or spoken, is um it can be deferred or pushed out through these semantic chains of association. 
it's good to hear you. It's good to hear that that slight that slight struggle in your voice there. Is it? Is it? All right. <laughs> uh, but, but see, the bottom line is that that for my thinking which is manifestly superior to um, to uh, Derrida's bumblings and fumblings Said and ob that. obfuscations. Said, imagine, imagine, he's still got that immaturity about him. It's amazing. I, just, I, reckon, I like it about you. <laughs> well, um, it, yes. Uh, the, the point being that Derrida is still talking about writing uh, as fundamentally glottographic or representing words right so despite everything he talks about he's still fundamentally in the habit of mind that views writing as being an epiphenomena or something that comes after speech its purpose being to represent speech that's the that's the issue with it wrong you've got this so wrong uh, but the the thing is they they both came they both arrived simultaneously we just named them differently and then you've got Socrates. Oh, it's a, it's, a, it's a dangerous supplement. Oh, and this is what I wanted to talk to you about. And this is a, was the bit that I didn't think you got to. And this was why I did want to speak to you about it. The reason Western metaphysics has fought this and has, and has, and has tried to palm it off and said, oh, there he, there he done what he's, you know, he's up his ass. he don't know what he's talking about is because it challenges human presence. Because if you're speaking to someone, you're present, you're there. It's all present and sure. it's all, we're, we're humans. Whereas if you write something and you go to the other side of the world, your, your presence is absent, but it isn't. Sure. And the proof, and, is, the and... proof is in a love letter. You can write a love letter to someone and and she's gone. She could be even dead. And and, and I like I I, un I unfold it before me, and I'm like reading. I'm like, oh, I love. I've got a niche minge. And then you're like, I love you. You're right here with me. This is like you and I are together. And, and right? then you get to the last line and go, who? <laughs> Gen yes. Jennifer, who? <laughs> but but basically, what you're saying is fundamentally that. That the idea, and this is Derrida's whole riff, that the idea that uh, 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 speech is more present than writing is false. Yeah. At that, it, that, but, that, that, that but, to the same degree that writing is contingent and based on but, deferral or difference, so likewise but, is speech. But also, how much that has affected the way we've organized our societies. We've all uh, and we've organized our power structure, and hence grammatology and the idea that there's a logos or an ordering feature to writing that's uh, that's um, a part and parcel of, of Western whatever. The issue is, though, and I think you're missing this point because you're just not as quick on your feet. Um, the, the issue is essentially that he's talking about a definition of writing that requires speech. I don't ever see him go into dance notation. I, I oh, haven't no, seen he him does. Go. No, he does. He talks about footprints. And tracks. Well, he talks about footprints. That, that's, I, and you're the one who's not quick enough on your feet. So it's fucking crocs you're wearing. Take them off. Have a little... Uh, we're in England, we call it Morris dancing. There you go. <laughs> Paint my face black in shame. <laughs> and, um, and, do, and do my special something. Yeah, well, if he, if he understands that, then, yeah, for sure. Then why is he constantly talking about speech? Well, he's because not. That's his project. He's not. He's not. He's talking about writing in the general sense. And what is that general sense? The pair of them together. Right. And it, it, the pair and, that has been artificially separated by the likes of Socrates. Sure, but the but but the point I'm getting at is that. He's he's pushed them to, based on how he defines it. He, he necessitates their being paired when, in fact, writing um, pre-exists conventional spoken. It, it predates conventional spoken language, unquestionably. Right. Particularly if he's someone who considers the idea of tracks, you know, um, 
if you're looking at tracks and how an animal orients spatially, like I've just been looking at this dude, uh, Peter Carruthers or whatever, he's talking about working memory and how you create a spatial map and the rest as sure. based upon following the tracks and the sense of your environment. And, you know, the idea that the first page is the plane of your environment, you know, so and the fact that you can follow these tracks or that you make marks in space. And a lot of people get tangled up in the idea that writing has to be visual. It is visual, et cetera, when in fact, no, it's spatial. So if you have a, a, a framework around you, this plane of your environment, and there are points in that, on that plane that you have marked in some fashion, even olfactor, olfactable, yeah, olfactable yeah. marks. And, and, and audio, of course. Well, no, or audio doesn't last. You can't mark that, that's not writing. Writing requires relatively lasting signs in space. The problem with, with this- well, like, what, you, can't, you can't remember a piece of music. But that, that's 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 in your mind. This is so. But but the point is that that's not staying. While you're busy remembering the 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 piece of music that you heard at X position, if someone else goes to X position, or I should say X position because it sounds like I'm talking about expository shit. If you go to position Y on the map, where you heard that sound that you've walked off and are now remembering, if that sound is no longer there, that's not a fixed point in space, so you okay. can't navigate from it. Okay, so 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 why why doesn't writing in the traditional sense put the put the put human presence above above the absence of 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 uh writing in the general sense you just said writing in the general sense and then writing in yeah the general I, did, sense. I didn't have a clue what i was saying but it's something having to do with presence and absence um yeah and, that, writing. That, and, that, and that's the bit that i felt like you don't, don't get me wrong here i was when i was listening to you i was thinking that's the bit i think I want to hear you talking about that. Well, then look at it like this. Presence I wasn't, and challenge, I wasn't challenging you. Sure. I was and, and thinking, that's the bit I wanted to hear. And clearly both of us are, are, are not up on our Derrida, right? You know, I mean, I, I looked at it again and ha the translations are awful. And, um, and I don't like Spivak for my part, but here, here, let me throw it at you like this. Let's leave Derrida aside, right? If you think about presence and absence, if you assume first off that writing is spatial, that is not visual. And I can prove that to you because if it was visual, Braille, um, Braille wouldn't work, right? So Braille is spatial. There are spatial arrangements of dots that you pass over with your finger, and you can feel the relative arrangements of dots. You can feel the sequence but, that your finger is going does, across. Doesn't the, per, doesn't the person who's doing that? Yeah, Braille's a, a weird one because I don't know whether people doing that have a have a have a visual um, representation of that in their mind i don't know enough about because braille. they well braille you've got people who are born blind who can use it so if they do have some visual representation i would tend to think that they have a spatial representation of some right. form okay, right okay. maybe it's based on proprioception or the relative position of the dots as you sense them with the tip of your finger right but the point being that it's spatial there's spatial arrangements, and in order for them to maintain their meaning, those spatial relationships must be fixed to some extent, fixed and lasting, right? Now, what we have is an environment around us, and it can be marked, right? So you have dogs competing with scent marks. So we talk about things like a pissing contest, but the dog's pissing at different heights depending on its size. So the relative yeah. position of the competing marks tells you which one is 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 um, uh, uh, more likely to win in a confrontation because it will be the one that has a larger size. And therefore, when it hikes one leg up to piss on the tree, it literally hits higher on the tree. So you've got a vertical axis of hierarchy established by scent marks. Yeah. Now that's happening at borders and in different places that mark territory. So you've got a spatial arrangement, you've got marks in space that are scent marks, and that's <laughs> fundamentally kind of writing. I have to get the last piece out. When it comes to presence, what could more, I mean, far more than speech, bring a person to life as being present, even at a remove, than their scent. Like, I remember the the last time I fucking, I was crazy about this woman and she'd come by to visit and she left a bunch of her shit 
at my house and then later had moved on to South America or wherever the fuck she went on her trip. And she decided she wasn't coming back. Um, and she's like, you know, I want you to take my luggage and maybe, you know, ship it off for me. And I'm like, I'm going to go to the fucking trouble of shipping the shit back. <laughs> you arrange it and have the guy come pick it up. But the problem was that shit was in my house. Yeah. And I'm sensitive to this woman that I'm in love with, but it's all falling apart and everything. And you get very sensitive to their scent. And so I walk into the damn room and I can smell her clothes over there in their yeah. case. There's nothing more present. That's why like a dog will freak out and try so, to so her, so her not being there. Well, her being partially present through the scent. And I'll tell you what, the scent was more meaningful to me by far than anything about a letter she wrote me that said, Oi, love, I have an itchy minge. You know, if you, if, if what I'm saying is that if writing spatial and therefore scent marks qualify and scent marks are more immediate yeah, but if as a presence, been... then your writing, if you leave aside speech, is more present than speech itself. If someone's been blind since birth, how have, how have they got a, a conception of spatial differentiation? How, how, well, how it's do like they know the hippocampus. That? It's like, look, think about the knowledge, right? The, the book of Dave, right? And Dave yeah. was a taxi driver in London or whatever, driving those fucking yeah. black cabs. Yeah. Um, the, the, no, they, I, that, I, out of all the cabs, they're the best, believe me. They're the ones uh, I, I, I believe that, you know instead of a, a seek and a hatchback um but the uh but the um the uh but the point is that people who uh, the people who have the knowledge the taxi drivers who've internalized the knowledge they've done tests where they fucking look at their hippocampi which is this hippocampus up here uh, uh, at the at the base of the brain and it's associated with two things very specifically both spatial orientation and memory and so as they get more spatial orientation and they've memorized the knowledge that once upon a time they had to, now I'm sure they have some GPS shit, um, yeah. it would literally lead to an enlargement of their hippocampus. So spatial orientation and memory, regardless of whether you have the visual element, right? Because, I mean, think about things like proprioception or how you get around in a room even when the lights are out because you have a spatial representation of some kind, even if it's not visual. So anyway, my point is that the, uh, the whole idea that writing is supposedly less present than speech and the, it, it, it's all based on the very old ideas that he's trying to torpedo. So I get that he's trying to torpedo these. Our viewers don't even know what the hell your viewers don't even know what the hell we're talking about right now. But they the, do. Well, they sorry. do. Look, look, John M. Dog has said rip off of Ridley Walker. They do. Know. They do know what they're talking about. Hightower is agreeing with you. Somebody just said vagicillology. So, um, um, and someone else said he doesn't know about us in England. No, I don't know anything about all of you in England. But who's that Brown, dude? He, he knows you? what's going back. Ridley Walker. Who's Ridley Walker? <laughs> hey, look. Hey, look. That, that, was, that was a good conversation for the last five minutes of the stream. Um, Mosaic right. Labrador, check out his, his nasty little... Um, uh, sting in the tail. Sense of smell has brought back forgotten memories from decades ago. Love it when it happens, usually. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's the price, you know. Do you really want to bring that back? Mm -hmm. Baggins is following this. Well, all right, well, look, okay. How about, how about, how, have a think about this. I don't want you to, I don't want you to agree to it now and then go, oh. Right, right, right. Because we both didn't do it. Right, we can we can not talk about this in future, right? Well, that's what I'm saying. Let's go off and get our heads around the presence absence thing. In a couple of months, we'll set up another presence absence stream, and uh, we'll 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 keep five minutes yeah. at the end. Right for, the, for that too. <laughs> right, right. We can not talk about it once more. Well, yes, I am perfectly happy to do it. But isn't this the point at which you sh you should call for uh, one last infusion of grift? Right. I mean, these people, well, have, these keep people have got to come through for you here. Well, it it is. It hasn't been a bad grift actually. They've been they've been um, pretty generous today. I'll do. I'll be doing another couple of grifts today anyway. So that would be bad. Baggins gleaned some insights. And um, um, we will be playing the outro music, which gives them another couple of minutes to... Uh, this is what out. everyone learned about. This right here is what everyone learned about. This was the most important thing. And the discussion of bespoke clothing. That was the... Uh, 
that was the talk you know what i'm not joking they they some people they hate they they get really angry when i talk about um um tailored suits it's really it's really weird and it's it's so english it's it's the english it's the european tradition the classic style why nationalists would get so shitty about it and i think i know why actually it's the same reason why 16 year olds go i fucking hate reading because the the globalist machine has wanted them to they don't they don't want them to and you know imagine if all the english people or all the all the british people in 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 the uk walked around in suits and and, and in their own style it would stand them out culture should be exclusive it's meant to exclude people this is us this is what we do you don't you ain't allowed it they do it in cambodia every three or four weeks they'll have a festival here it's their music it's their food it's their clothes it's all their stuff and they do it and it's exclusive you're not part of it whereas in europe the authorities have said no you can't have exclusive things because you're excluding people and you're not allowed to exclude people and it's a fucking liberty and when i hear my own people play along with it i don't want to be seen wearing a suit what kind of ponce wears a suit <laughs> fuck me man i like the idea if i go you know uh, visit the uk again and I, I get there and there are all these people wearing these itchy wool suits and um and uh, i try to go and order like a toad in a hole and they're like whoa whoa <laughs> you can't eat that you can't eat that stilton whoa 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. right i like it yes do it if Help. you if you get out to the uk again let me know and i'll put you onto a tailor who, who, who will make you a lovely three-piece suit with a couple of shirts for about 1100 and they will that will last you 10 15 years and it will look amazing, it'll look amazing. yeah top drawer exactly I've had a couple of, uh, do you know what I mean, Jean de Valet? The suit is one of the best inventions ever. You ask any hot chick, any oh, yeah. hot uh, chick. Hands down. What? Every girl's crazy about a sharp dress, man. Yeah, yeah but it's true. Mm. What is the hottest thing a man can wear? A, a sharp suit. They'll all say it. The only ones who are going to say uh, a pair of night, a pair of night tracksuit bottoms, a pair of Reebok classics. And like one of those puffer jackets. I mean, when I see that, I'm just like dripping. Do you right. know what I mean? And I'm then dripping. we'll go back home and what we'll do is we'll make all sorts of sculptures with paper plates and macaroni and glue. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. But do be careful. The ones who like look at you closely, like the scary women are the ones who get that, but they're like checking out your shoes and they know how much they cost, you know, and they're looking at the watch like they know the model. They'll be like, Yeah, yeah. Those ones are, yeah, stay away brand. Yeah, no, no, that's a very good point. Actually, it, it, that's a good point. They they need to be they need to be impressed, but not educated. Yeah, that's not. not I don't want to. I don't want to say to me, oh, they're those Crockett and Jones Shell quarterbands. I'm like, yeah, I just need to go to the toilet. <laughs> right, right. And they'll do that with things like perfumes and shit too. They're like, are you wearing egoist? Right? Like, yeah. and, and if they carry it onto the clothing, and it's really frightening if they carry it onto the cars. Remember, I went yeah. out on a date with this stripper once, and she came out, looked out her porch, and like I was going to take her somewhere. So I arrived at her house to pick her up, and she looks down and she goes, hmm, truck. Yeah, oh so, my God. Yeah. You should have gone, oh, stripper. <laughs> she said, she set a fucking blanket of mine on fire at like three in the morning that night. Somehow she fucking running around naked with her tattooed stripper ass like pushed this down blanket of mine backwards into a candle that i had had lit and she just looked around laughing as it caught in flame and then she's uh, running around fucking naked she, smoke she, coming out from under the door just fucks was, everything up she was smoking ice up her ass man she <laughs> i don't know what she was doing she probably purpose but anyway that's neither hot here nor there. You have to, you have got, you've got like some sort of a romantic event coming. Yeah, up, hang on you? a minute, hang on, hang on. Baggins said, grammatology plus semiology, drunk jazz shoes version. That's very good. Nice one, Baggins. Nice to have you here, Baggins. I've noticed you're recently, you're, you're quite new to the glorious house of scrubs and you've established yourself. So uh, it's nice to have you here. Name said, came for the gr grammatology. Graham? 
Yeah, well, came for the grammar tololoi, stayed for the itchy minge. Well, you, you and uh, semi agog <laughs> um, together. Right, let me just check my entropies. Uh, we got that one, got that one. Dawn Browning said, oh, for flipping X sake, semiotics, please. Now we got to go. Chrissy says, we got to run. Um, oh, no, we had that one. We had that one. We had that one. Right, people, people, it has been an absolute pleasure. Um, Semi-Gog, thank you so much for coming on. It's been an absolute pleasure. If it weren't for the missus, I, I, you know, we'd done two and a half hours on your stream the other week, and it, it, it flew by, and it was a, a real pleasure. Um, people don't tend to ask me on streams, although I am going on Teddy Dutton's, Professor Teddy Dutton's. And... Uh, mm. That'll be interesting because most of his audience are members of the uh, National um, German Workers' Party and uh, they don't like me because I used to tell jo jokes about having sex with dogs and, oh, you can't do that. You can't tell jokes. That's not allowed, apparently. So that could be interesting. Well, I look forward to seeing it. I saw you with uh, um, on a I Hypocrite stream or whatever. And, um, yeah, yeah. So, oh, yeah, yeah it seems like you're getting around. I'll tell you what, though, that bird. She was way into you, dude. I was like, she's yeah. like, wait a minute, I'm going to go get some white wine. I was like, mm, check no. it out. I tell you, you know what that is? She likes the accent. She likes well, the accent. Well, and the sense you. of confidence. And the sense Thank of you. Thanks for reducing it to just something <laughs> that I have no control over. But I talked about it with a mate afterwards because he calls it the fascination. Well, she's because. Doing Big, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, I yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it, it was, was it was it was bleeding obvious. I would love to have, fucking hell. <laughs> but it is. But and but listen, I have a lot of young lads on my stream, and they say to me, "Why have you never had problems with women?" And I say, "Whoa, whoa, 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 whoa! I've never had problems pulling women. Because of that, I've actually had more problems right. with women." But the thing is, it's, it's, it's just be honest and be confident. Play the hand you've got, not one you want, and you will have no problem. And my, my best friend calls it the fascination. Because I will just be honest and confident at any situation, suddenly their heads turn. They, you, you, they do what that bird done on that stream you saw the other day. She, she, I mean, it was it was pretty damn uh, obvious. I'm just going to give you this as as a little bit, since your friend calls it the uh, the the fascination. Um, a fascinate verb, 1590s, bewitch, enchant, from French fascinare, from Latin fascinatus, past participle of fascinare, bewitch, enchant, fascinate, from fascinus, a charm, enchantment, spell, witchcraft. I believe that it probably comes from. Um, from a uh, 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 binding, something having to do with binding, fascinans. So it's all about a spell, and it's about a binding. So and, um, and that's, we read that's some that, black that's some black magic shit going on right there, man. And we read that exact quote the other day when we spoke about the fascination. After that video, we read that exact quote because I quickly looked up fascination. So I, we, I looked that one up. It's amazing. Um, quick one from Dawn Browning. First, first, I first set eyes on Master Ben. That's her husband, who's a, an absolute gen. When he was uh, when he was in a, sing, a singlet, tracky, dax and gumboots. I was dressed all in denim. It was semiotically love at first sight. What are dax? Um some kind of some sort of fucked up australian something yeah yeah they're antipodean they're an antipodean yeah. couple, so. everything is yeah upside down um uh, and gum boots <laughs> like gum boots are um gum boots are like i think a roofers gum boots are like the, the 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 flexible boots you wear on a roof when you're getting your skull baked up there um in order to not damage the shingles i don't know what the hell are gum boots I don't know, but that that was lovely. I'm glad. I'm glad. It, you know, do you know what, Dawn and Master Ben? Whatever it takes. Um, I've sorted out the outro music. Semiagog, thank you very much. Um, two months time or a month's time, we'll do semiotics and grammatology, and um, I'm sure we'll get there again. 
Absolutely. Thank you very much for having me. Um, uh, 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 peace out to the scrubs. Yeah, and have a wonderful weekend, mate. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye-bye. Ta da Isn't he excellent? I I I wish he I, I joke that he's my new best friend, but people like him are rare. I've 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 met two of them in my life. My real life best friend and him. He's got that confidence, he's got that honesty, and uh and I, I'm I'm over the moon that we're talking. I really am, and I've I've got absolutely no no concern over saying that. It, it's uh, it's great to be talking to someone that you, that you can bond with that quickly, because it's not that we've got a lot in common. It's it's because we've got the important things in common: confidence and honesty. That's what makes it important. And that's what makes it working. There's a couple more super chats coming in. Give me one second. But go and, go and subscribe to his channel um, because if he's anything, if he's anything like me, YouTuber, absolutely screwing me. I'll be down at. I, w I was nearly at thirty thousand subscribers. I'm now nearly. I'll be under twenty thousand subscribers next month. Thanks, YouTube. Um, Schrodinger's Gaffney says, wow, what a double act. I'll take that all day long, Gaffney. Nice one. And thanks for the donation. That's much appreciated. Are you drunk, Dangerfield? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but I, I wish I wasn't. <laughs> um, right. I am going to play the outro. That's going to give you two minutes and 20 seconds to donate. And, uh, Make it happen, and I might get a stream out of you tonight. You might get a stream out of me tonight. Because if I say to my missus, no, I've got to do a stream, I'll make about $50. Lovely. They like it when I talk about my glands. Uh, if not, you can fuck off, and I'll, uh, I'll take my missus out, and we'll get five pints of cold lager, a pizza, and we'll get change out of $10. That won't be happening. I'm about 100 years old. Anyway, people, it's been an absolute pleasure. I might see you later. Um, it's hard to say because Saturday is our only day when we get the old day together, and I've already done two hours without her. Um, but I enjoyed that. Go and give Semi a gog uh, um, a, 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 a subscription because we ain't getting them anymore. Well, I ain't, so I imagine he ain't. Maybe he's smashing it. I don't know. Ta-da, people. Oh, hang on. He's only done it again, hasn't he? This is absolute bullshit. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday, people, and enjoy your life. You get one. Make it count. It's happening right now. You're nearer to living than you are. You're nearer to dying than you are to living. Ta-da! All the world loves a lover. All the girls in every land of man to know. The joy of loving is to live in the world of man. Love. I can't believe it's fucking Friday. What an absolute result! That's an absolute result. Amazing. Music starts to play. Night will turn to day, darkness disappears when the one you love is near. You're in man All the world loves the lovers, all the girls, in every land of men to know. The joy of loving is to live. In the world of man, there's a place that is waiting for you. A world where the best in life is free. Where time is always spring, happiness is king. Dreams you dream come true when the one you love loves you. You're a man. 
can't believe it's Friday. I mean, it means I've got to do a little bit of work, but not a lot. And then it's Saturday tomorrow. I can't believe it. That's you know, we talked about this before, haven't we? The the wrong day gift or the gift of the wrong day. And uh, what a cracking stream with semi I'm, I'm absolutely over the moon. And now I'm going to go out with the missus. Does life get much better? Who cares? See you later. Thank you for all the very nice compliments. It really does make a difference because when you set up a stream to talk about semiotics and grammatology and you end up just having an interesting chat, like we did lose a few people, but oh, I'm not listening to this. <laughs> but I think it was an interesting chat. It was a funny chat. And... Uh, and it really does make a difference when people say that they enjoyed it. So thank you, everyone who donated. Thank you, everyone who uh, uh, engaged in the chat. Thank you very much to the <laughs> most delightfuls and the <laughs> lurkers. Thanks to the boy Rags who's back on the firm taking care of things over there. And I can't believe it's Friday. Like I say, I've got a little bit of work to do, but I'm going to go and grab a cup of green tea. It's this lovely, it's like a green, a green, I don't know what you'd call it, like a green chai. It's really nice. Nice one, Baggins. And I appreciated your comments. Uh, I saw read your comments as they were coming in, as they were coming in with your super chats. And, uh, you know, things like that and things like what Sally say, <laughs> they, uh, they, they make a difference. Thank you, MozLab, for doing what you do best. And I will see you all maybe later. Um, Maybe tomorrow. Well, definitely tomorrow. Take care.